Dr. Salim Sarani joins us on this beautiful Thursday morning with another check of COVID-19 facts, the latest on what's going on in the world and here in our own backyard. Dr. Sarani, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, if you have a question for the doctor, be sure to text us at 361-855-6397. Dr. Sarani, let's talk about the second wave. I know uh, right now the White House and all the health officials, CDC, they're looking at a, a potential second wave that could be a lot worse than anything we've seen yet. Is that true, do you think? From the historical fact, that is very true. If you look at H1N1, the Spanish flu, those all the second waves were more severe and had more mortalities in there. So I think uh, that is very, very true. In this case, it becomes very crucial again is because we still don't have a vaccine. And when the second wave comes, uh, it will coincide with the flu season. So that becomes a very challenging. So on one hand, you have a higher rate of uh, hospitalizations and complications related to flu. And this will, on top of that, will create a more challenge. So I think this is a time where we can go back to our normal, but we need to practice and learn hand washing, cleaning our heart surfaces, uh, wiping our cell phones, uh, and also like keeping a safe distance. And also for the hospitals and healthcare providers and public health authorities uh, to ramp up their uh, preparations, because that will be the key thing that how we are going to handle the next uh, wave because first wave you can always say that well we were not aware or you can have a lot of reasons but when the second wave comes you know that it's coming in and especially in the area where you don't have an adequate herd immunity that can be a challenge corpus good thing we have a good so uh, physical distancing already there as a part of low population density no mass public transport some warm weather uh, but it's still i think we have a lot more to do Dr. Sarani, just before this interview here, we ran a story about the STX beef processing plant uh, having three to four employees there that tested positive for COVID-19. And right now the county is currently tracing them, trying to figure out who they come into contact with. They have even told us that it was safe for some of them to work there that are asymptomatic. How is that possible? And what kind of reassurance can you give people at home that maybe are like, well, heck, I'm not going to eat meat now if I know somebody that, that's sick preparing my meat. This is a very challenging thing because, you know, this virus is a very long incubation period. So if you're looking at the antibody testing, people say, well, just go ahead and do the antibody testing or do the RT-PCR. RT-PCR sometimes may not be positive until you're symptomatic. The second thing is the antibody testing is good to see if you have acquired, had the infection and developed the antibody. But if it is negative, it doesn't mean anything. We know that there are two types of antibody one is IgM, one is IgG. IgM is suggesting that you are actually having an infection, but it, it is the first antibody to appear. It takes about almost seven to 11 days before it appears after you start having some symptoms. IgG comes about 12 days, but what it is presumed that by two weeks, you actually have developed the antibody. But if somebody is having just diagnosed there and other folks have been exposed at that time, so even if you do the testing right now, it probably can be negative, and negative test doesn't mean anything. So the best thing is that we need to watch those very close contacts and isolate. And if they're having any symptoms, then we need to do the testing on those. I know a study just came out yesterday showing that it's possible that African Americans could be disproportionately affected uh, by COVID-19, that they're, I don't want to say more susceptible, but this study, it really it honed in on a group that's not getting the, the proper care that, uh, that they need, it appears. This is always a challenge. It's called a disparity in ethnic uh, uh, care. And the studies after the studies, again, have shown that uh, those uh, uh, ethnic minorities, they actually are more susceptible to any of the uh, conditions and disease. A couple of factors may be possible. First, sometimes lack of insurance. So if you don't have insurance, you seek the healthcare late, and that can result in having a more challenges. Second thing is the environmental and social and economic factors can play a role, that they may have a more clustered uh, of those in a small population or a small density area that can predispose. The other thing we don't know whether if genetics has anything to play with that. But one of the thing is social and environmental factor and economical factor 
and lack of insurance, we have seen a lot of the other conditions which are playing a key role. So I think that this is a, another learning opportunity for us to see how we can minimize and mitigate those uh, uh, ethnic disparities and the uh, racial disparities. There's always an opportunity to go back and improve on what we've been doing. Dr. Sarani, thank you so very much. You're going to be with us throughout the next uh, hour and 45 minutes uh, or so, until 7 at least. We appreciate your time as always. If you have a question uh, for Dr. Sarani, please send us a text at 361-855-6397. Uh, they're starting to pour in right now. Uh, Barbie will be interviewing you coming up a little bit later. Dr. Sarani will check.